I've been coaching female athletes for 24 years, and I believe they can be neatly divided into two groups, those who get it and those who don't. The ones who don't get it far outnumber those who do. That's why coaches are so elated when a player who gets it ends up on their roster. Those are the players that win championships. The ones who don't get it are programmed to complicate their existence as athletes because they've never truly figured out the purpose of competition. They're forever walking an impossible high wire, struggling to find a balance between competitiveness and relationships and being the girl that society wants them to be. Their competitive life is a never-ending compromise, a search for a comfortable middle ground so that their desire to conquer won't threaten their social status or their relationships with teammates. That compromise dilutes their value as competitors. Although their competitive volume has the capacity of reaching 10, they won't turn the dial above 7. Instead of charging mightily into the arena of competition, they are always dragging one foot in a puddle of mediocrity. The beautiful few who get it are not hamstrung by this compromise. They have no problem separating their off-field relationships from their competitive duties. The two entities exist in two separate containers. They can be great competitors, and they can be wonderful friends. They are hardly ever both at the exact same moment. There is one very simple element that separates those who get it from those who don't. The ones who get it fully grasp that the very simple premise of competition is to separate the winner from the loser. That's it. The ones who get it have this premise digested. It dictates the way they approach competition during matches and training sessions. It categorizes their relationships with teammates, relationships that differ radically between moments of competition and all other moments. They don't bow to anyone during the throes of competition. They play to win because regardless of what you've been told, winning is in fact the end-all be-all of competition. The primary purpose of this book is to teach those who want to get it how to get it. I'm a woman's college soccer coach. My job is to teach young women that they have every right to want to win as much as men do, that they don't need permission to do what is necessary to achieve victory, and that they should never apologize for conquering an opponent. From 1998 to 2006, I served as the women's soccer coach at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Due to the specialized academic curriculum of our university and our limited amount of scholarships, one thing was guaranteed we would never be as talented as the best teams in the nation. We didn't have the academic curriculum to attract the very best players, nor the scholarship money to buy them. To beat those teams and many others, we needed to maximize the tools that we had, and the most powerful tool at our disposal was always going to be our attitude, our conscious choices. Although we were challenged by our academic curriculum and scholarship budget, our program won a lot of games and championships. This is how we did it. 